Welcome to the Healthcare Provider Happy Hour. This is a safe space where we invite healthcare providers to unapologetically be themselves after the working day. My name is Jennifer George, and each week I will share stories, ideas, and guests that will help transform your stress to success and fulfillment. Are you with me? Grab your drink of choice and let's chat. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the first episode of the Healthcare Provider Happy Hour. I'm your host, Jennifer George. And over my glass of water, I just wanted to sit and chat with you a little bit about why this podcast came to be and who the heck am I to bring this to you. So first of all, I am a physiotherapist. I am an author. I am a proud daughter. I am a self-care enthusiast. And I'm an introvert with an extroverted love for humanity. And I don't know about you, but when I got into healthcare uh, 12 years ago, I got into it for two reasons, because I had a passion for the human body and the science of it and how to optimize its wellness. And I also had a passion to help others um, lead a more fulfilling and optimal life. So that is why I got into my practice. What has kept me here all of these years, though, is not the knowledge I've gained, it's rather the connections and the relationships and the growth I've, I've received throughout my career. And this podcast is just another example of that. You see, when you get into these post-grad educational courses, it's highly competitive. You have to achieve like really high grades to get into these um, programs and that in itself creates a competitive mindset. And you can't really deny that. And it's only getting worse from what I'm seeing. And I believe that because of it, that carries into our clinical practice and then into our everyday life because of the stress of it all. And so I believe that healthcare providers need to have a creative outlet. I believe they need to have a community that supports them and collaborates with them rather than competes with them. And I also believe that we have to consciously focus on the positives in life because we are constantly bombarded by the negatives, unfortunately, from the uh, concerns and the goals that our patients bring to us every day. So this podcast is a bit of an oxymoron because in a sense, you can look at the healthcare industry and field as being quite negative, but at the heart of it all, and that's in the heart of its providers, There are some really amazing people out there and they're doing amazing things and they want to bring out the best in their patients and the best in themselves and the best in their profession. And I think that the only way to move our professions forward is if we collaborate together. Sometimes I think there's a stigma around healthcare providers that we feel we have to be immune to life's challenges because we have the knowledge to fix ourselves. And so there, there comes this little bit of perhaps embarrassment or this insecurity with asking for help. But knowledge is different than emotion, right? And it's different than understanding. And a lot of times pain and suffering has an emotional attachment to it. And so we kind of need to find our way again. And we have to be responsible for our health to some capacity. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with working towards your own wellness as you help others do the same. In fact, I believe that connection in itself helps your patients to trust in you more because they see the integrity with which you live your life, um, which is on a journey of wellness, and they can relate to that on some level. So it used to be that in when I was trained as a physio that you didn't talk about these things, that vulnerability didn't have a place in practice because you had to be very cognitively disciplined, right? And emotionally disciplined. But I can recall many moments being with a patient who was showing some kind of suffering, some kind of despair And it had nothing to do with even their physical complaint with why they were seeing me, but it had everything to do with the navigation of the healthcare system. 
And that's when I decided, you know what, I've been there with my dad as a caregiver, that I am going to be a little vulnerable here. And I'm going to share a piece of advice and a piece of, um, of me that kind of helped our family to get through this difficult time. And, and now I've started doing that with my patients. And to be honest with you, it's professional. There's no boundaries being crossed. And patients actually look to you like, oh, I can relate to you now. Now, you really do understand what I'm going through. And we do, and we shouldn't hide that because the connection is what actually unlocks your patient's potential. That's what unlocks it, not the content. When you think about it, guys, and you think about all of the positive outcomes you've had with your patients over the course of your career, no matter how long it's been or how short it is so far, you've never really got fulfillment from just healing a sprained ankle. You don't think of it that way. What you're thinking about is giving somebody's life back. That's what brings you fulfillment. That's what keeps me in this profession. That's what keeps me on the front line. That compassion to serve fuels my purpose every single day. I'm not concerned about the physical. I'm concerned about what that means to my patient in the long run. And that is what will sustain you in healthcare. And that is what will, con will allow you to continue to grow and adapt and create meaningful connections that lead to the best outcomes for your patients because it empowers them. So as much as I love the front line, what I love most about it is creating connections for patients, helping them navigate through the system. I find a large part of what I do in a hospital setting is I'm kind of that in-between. I'm an advocate. I'm the physio providing direct care. I'm the collaborator among the interprofessional team. And I kind of play all of these roles. And I love that about what I do every day. But <laughs> there's this element to me that craves growth, that craves impact, that craves influence, that wants to move what we do as physios forward, but also especially wants to improve healthcare delivery for all people in our country, in Canada. And part of that means for me that I have to step out of my comfort zone and do what I feel called to do, and that's to help educate and inspire and mentor and facilitate um, current healthcare providers on everything around and in between their skills that creates a comprehensive experience for your patients every day. So what that means is connection. What that means is communication. What that means is you know empathy and understanding and it also means reflection on your part in discovering your purpose and what you're called to do. I'll never forget this time when I was in the ER as a patient and I was just about to go into physio school and the ER doctor had said to me why do you want to go into physio? Physios get bored and then they, they usually want to go into something else. And obviously I was offended by that comment and I still don't believe that to be true because I know a lot of physios who've, who've never done that. <laughs> um, but I think what he was trying to say at the time was um, if you're somebody who creates and craves growth, who wants to be the, the best at being yourself and achieving that highest level of understanding of oneself, that it doesn't mean it necessarily takes you out of the profession, but what it means is that you kind of have to take the baton and start to lead in a way. And that's kind of where I'm finding myself. I wouldn't say I'm a leader, but I would like to think of myself as um, a healthcare professional that other professionals can speak with, collaborate with, gain some understanding and enlightenment by, and kind of reflect on the way that um, patients feel, because I've kind of been on both sides. I've, I've got that dual perspective of a caregiver and as a frontline healthcare provider, and I've worked in private practice, and I've worked in community care, and I've worked in long-term care, and I'm currently in an inpatient rehab unit, which I think is kind of the best of all of those worlds. And, you know, you really have to find your place. The beautiful thing about being a physio is that we have so many options, but 
this is the type of stuff that I can do all day. So I can go to work and work a very tiring eight hour shift or more. And then I can come home and do this type of thing at night because I'm extremely passionate about it. And I don't believe that our healthcare profession is meant to burn out. I really don't. I believe that we're really just getting started. And I believe that we really are just starting now to speed things up and create more awareness around our capabilities and around our knowledge and skill set, but also around our global understanding of our patients' needs and that ability to advocate for them. So the thing about burnout is that it's running more rampant now than ever before. Burnout did exist a decade ago, but it didn't receive as much attention as it has now. In fact, the World Health Organization has now just deemed it an epidemic and as an occupational hazard. But the thing about this now is that content, knowledge, innovation, and technology is quite frankly at its peak right now. You know, and this is supposed to essentially create better patient outcomes, better diagnoses, better prognoses. It's supposed to coordinate services and communication. It's supposed to allow real time referrals and things like this. But the reality is that burnout is still running rampant, which tells me that knowledge and innovation and all of these things are not necessarily the answer to burnout. Really, at the end of the day, what good is all of that if you have a healthcare provider that's delivering that that is burnt out? Um, the other day, I actually saw a nurse who was so exhausted that she could not fathom answering another call bell on the floor because she was exhausted. And I thought to myself, like, this is not right. And it's nothing against her. Like, it wasn't intentional on her part. She's probably one of the most compassionate nurses that I know, and patients speak very highly of her. But she was so burnt out. And I think with the World Health Organization classifying this as an occupational hazard, has kind of taken the responsibility off of ourselves. And I mean, all of us, not just healthcare providers, anybody who experiences signs of burnout as not having to address it, not having to understand it more. And I really think that you can't have burnout without a lack of fulfillment with oneself on some level. So you've got to be somewhere, you know, with respect to your health, unsettled. And until you kind of determine what that's all about and when you start to make that shift in improving that situation for yourself, perhaps then you could give more to others, right? Because some people think of burnout too as compassion fatigue, right? Which is the whole thing about healthcare providers being bombarded by negative situations, you know, dealing with people who are potentially dying or who've been given bad news and things like that and how that wears on us as providers. But when you think about the phrase giving feels better than receiving, that's the way I see healthcare. I see that the more compassion we're able to give, the more we're able to create a safe space and a brave space and a happy space for our patients, the better we feel at the end of the day. And if that's not there, then chances are it's not just an occupational reason for that. And if it is, then you can address that right away. And, you know, when it comes to conflict resolution, I'm all about preventing conflict to begin with. I think that we need to be more um, aware and observant of what's to come rather than what is and prepare for those things because what is has already been too late. And in some cases for our patients, that's critical. It could have a critical impact on their well-being and the prognosis of their situation. So we have to kind of assess our life and we have to take a look in. And, and I find this difficult for us to do because everything we've ever been taught up until this point has been very output focused, right? It's been all about your skill. It's been all about your ability to assess. It's been all about everything outside of yourself, but we've never from the beginning taught ourselves how to take care of ourselves. And if I could just share with you an example, like I, I, dealt with burnout a few years back. I was still an entry-level provider within my first three years or so of practice. 
And I was confronted with a significant professional challenge that made me feel completely inadequate. It made me completely anxious, exhausted, irritable, depersonalized for my colleagues and for my work. I just felt like I had to question everything. And I had to um, eventually recognize it for what it was. And although I felt like the situation was somewhat out of my control, I had to take back my power and I had to take personal responsibility for doing that. And I'll tell you, it wasn't taking more postgraduate courses on manual therapy and acupuncture and, and taping and things like that that got me back to where I am now. Um, but it was actually personal development stuff. And that was something that when I tapped into that world at that time in my life, um, it was the most liberating, um, growth filled, uh, moment for me because I realized that there is so much space in this world more than we realize for everybody. And if we can just start supporting one another rather than competing or feeling the need to compete with one another, only then can you add value to people, but only then can somebody bring value to you. I think this is a good place to wrap this up. I think you have a greater understanding of who I am, um, why I'm doing this podcast, and Recognize that this is not only my creative outlet, but also my invitation to you to listen in, to join me as a guest if you feel inclined to share something that other people can be inspired by and learn from and implement. Um, I would be happy to chat. You can visit my website at jennifergeorge.co and reach out to me through there. And if you really feel inclined, I would appreciate an honest review on the podcast platform that you're listening to right now, because really the only way to move uh, healthcare delivery forward, I believe, is to move it together. So thanks again for your time, guys. And remember to stay happy. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you next time.